Yeah, Jonathan Warner, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-W-A-R-N-E-R. -E I'm the alligator program leader for the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. So first off, because I'm still kind of new to this whole story and the and alligators in Texas, what is the alligator program through Texas Parks and Wildlife? Yes, yeah, so the, the alligator program, we oversee and regulate um, alligator farming, alligator hunting, alligator nuisance control, uh, education, outreach, um, uh, research, education, uh, pretty much, you know, anything in the sphere of, of uh, uh, the alligator world, we, we've kind of got our fingers in. And so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big state and Texas is an underrated state when it comes to our alligator population. Most people equate places like uh, Louisiana or Florida with having lots of alligators. But, you know, we've got upwards of half a million of these animals in the state, uh, particularly in the southeast, uh, southeastern uh, portion of the of Texas and, and East Texas and South Texas. So, um, yeah, alligators are a, a native Texan and, and an important part of our aquatic ecosystems. In that same vein, is Central Texas, I, I, I hesitate to say it's like a hotbed for alligators no that's a, that's a great question so um the core of the species distribution in the state is is um uh, along our um counties and in, in our coastal marshes where there's prime uh nesting and, and feeding habitat um places like austin dallas fort worth they naturally occur there it's at the uh, edge of their natural distribution in the state. Um, and so we don't have uh, high population densities there, but they certainly do occur uh, at low levels and, and kind of what we've, as evidence the last couple of days, the situation there in Austin, uh, they do pop up from time to time. Um, I believe it was Lake Ladybird uh, last year where there was a juvenile that was cited by um, folks that were out there uh, um, recreating on the water. And so from time to time, you know, Travis County, certainly that they pop up, but uh, definitely not at the densities that we see in other parts of Texas. So are you in charge of like rehoming them if they need to be? Is that like fall under your role? Yeah. So in a nutshell, um, well, let me preface it by saying by and large for the number of alligators we have in the state, we have relatively few problems when it comes to alligators and people coexisting. Uh, we have a lot of recreators hunting, fishing, um, uh, water sports uh, in alligator habitat. And for the most part, uh, we get along great with them. Uh, that said, you know, on occasion, there, there, um, uh, things can happen where we have to uh, remove an alligator. We have a nuisance alligator control program for that, where you have folks that are permitted to uh, capture and uh, relocate or move to a facility if necessary. Uh, those instances, for the most part, though, are few and far between. So what is the threshold then for if that has to happen? I mean, what has to happen in order to make or to, to force that decision? Yeah. So, Mike, your, your number one issue normally with people and alligators is people feeding alligators, which is illegal in Texas. And what happens is they begin to associate uh, the person as their food source and they lose their natural uh, fear and apprehension of people. Um, and that's when we can get into uh, situations that are potentially dangerous. Uh, like I said, we've had relatively few incidences in Texas over the years. Uh, but if there's a situation where it's been fed um, or um, it, it uh, has lost, like I said, it's, it's natural fear of people, um, then in, in those circumstances, we may need to go in and remove it. There are sir, all are, excuse me, also are instances um, of nat natural depredation. Alligators are predators. Um, their natural disposition is, is um, uh, they're very wary of people. They're very docile. Uh, but that said, they're still a carnivore. They're still a predator. And so on occasion, um, you know, water's edge, things like small dogs, uh, other mammals um, can get taken as prey. Um, and certainly we take those instances into, into account case by case. And if we need to remove an alligator, we certainly will. But as far as public safety, uh, obviously very important. Anytime there's a potential for, uh, for an incident or we have an alligator that's aggressive or um, has just, like I said, lost its fear of people, then we'll take the necessary steps to remove it. So I, I just saw some pictures here a few minutes ago. Uh, did you have Texas Parks and Wildlife people out today in Travis County trying to 
either find these alligators or what was yes, going sir. On? Yes, sir. So um, there's been some conflicting reports reports about uh, what's what's been going on there. But uh, earlier this morning, uh, our Texas game wardens responded uh, to a potential alligator related incident. Uh, they're in that neighborhood. They investigated the scene. They spoke to witnesses. Uh, ultimately, uh, could not confirm that there was an attack. There was no evidence of an animal being killed there, uh, but could confirm that there were alligators and other wildlife in that retention pond in that particular neighborhood. Uh, normally, this time of year, winter, cooler months, uh, alligators are more dormant. Um, they shut down when it comes to feeding. And so uh, we don't see a lot of nuisance complaint calls. So this is certainly an aberration as far as, as what we're normally dealing with this time of year. Uh, that said, uh, we're going to continue to monitor the area, uh, work with the community on best practices and dealing with alligators. And certainly if there's any concern for public safety, uh, our team will be there and deal with it as appropriate. Uh, one of the things that the public information person that was helping me out this morning, Megan, uh, she said that rehoming alligators is a challenge. One, because it has to meet that kind of that certain case by case threshold that you're talking about. But two, it can have a, it can cause more problems than it solves. Uh, can you kind of talk about that a little bit? You know, how it affects the, the local ecosystem. And uh, Megan also mentioned that they're pretty territorial. Yeah. So certainly they're um, very territorial animals. Uh, they're also, uh, more intelligent than probably most people uh, would think. And so uh, particularly in the spring uh, leading to the mating season and early summer and nesting season, um, they are territorial. The males and the females will uh, establish dominance. Um, and so for that reason, um, not all the time, but in general, we shy away from relocating quote unquote problem animals uh, just because they have an extremely good awareness of their environment. And so, um, you know, that reptilian brain, that homing instinct, um, that, that knowledge of their surroundings um, is, is extremely good. And so what we don't want to do is get into a scenario where, well, we catch an alligator in a pond and we relocate them 20 miles uh, across the highway uh, down south. And what's going to happen, potentially could happen is, that homing instinct, he's going to he's gonna want to go back to where he was captured. He's going to go back to the area that he knows. And so we don't want to create a situation where he's crossing a highway and gets hit by a vehicle and potentially harm the alligator, or obviously people. And so we, we treat it, like I said, case by case basis. Sometimes relocation is appropriate. Uh, but certainly uh, for most adult alligators, we, we uh, generally don't relocate. If it's a problem animal, uh, like we discussed previously, we'll, we'll rehome it to a facility or do something along those lines. Um, but, uh, again, especially if it hasn't been fed, if it's, if it's, uh, just a normal alligator and alligator habitat doing alligator things, um, uh, we'll leave it be. Uh, but like I said, any concern for public safety, we'll be on it and we'll take care of it. So in this instance where you had game wardens out today, I imagine that this has not warranted removing the alligators that are living there, correct? Uh, it's an open investigation and still, still looking into it. Uh, as of this time, uh, this afternoon, there's not evidence that uh, there was a depredation event that took place uh, with a pet. Um, obviously, we're still monitoring it, and if, if it's necessary, um, we, will, we will certainly go in and have the capacity to uh, remove it, uh, but right now, still, uh, still ongoing and still a very fluid situation. And that particular area is developing pretty quickly. So how does just human development, you know, in terms of like just the expansion of the city of Austin or the Dell Valley area, like, you know, like where this incident took place, how does that affect the habitats and ecosystems that the alligators are living? In? No, that's a, that's a great question. And it's, it's certainly a pressing issue that we face in Texas as our urban areas expand, particularly, um, Austin, Travis County, where you're at, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, San Antonio, Houston, um, a lot of people moving to Texas from, from outside of Texas that, that maybe uh, aren't aware that we have alligators in the state. Um, and as we encroach on their habitat, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pertinent that we get the message out there of coexistence, that these are important parts of 
uh, our aquatic ecosystems in Texas, uh, just like fish and turtles and, and lots of other organisms. And so, um, like I said, if there's, if there's any indication or, or risk to the public, um, you know, that will get dealt with. But, it, you know, it's important that, that folks know that um, alligators are native Texans and they've been around uh, long, before, long before humans were in Texas. So, um, yeah, as, as, as best as possible, uh, number one solution is always to um, let's leave it be, um, let the people do what they do, let the alligators do what they do. And like I said, most of the time, by and large, 365 days a year, we don't have a lot of issues in the state with alligators. Uh, and then really just two more questions for you. One, um, how does, if an alligator gets removed, whether it's this incident or, or you know, anywhere else, how does that affect the ecosystem that already exists there? I mean, that's removing the top predator in that area. That's a, that's a great question. And um, um, from an ecological standpoint, is, is not uh, easy to uh, describe in a, in a quick soundbite. But essentially, in alligator populations, um, when you remove an individual, um, there's normally, in healthy populations, uh, it's next man up. There's another one that's going to gonna fill that niche. Uh, there's another one that's going to uh, take over, whether that would be a dominant breeding male or a nesting female. Uh, it's normally just uh, replaced by another alligator. Obviously, a lot of places in, in uh, the county where we're uh, discussing right now, we don't have high population. So there's a possibility that, um, yeah, it's just there's not going to be alligators in there anymore, and which certainly would have uh, top down ramifications for the food, food web of that local aquatic ecosystem. And then um, one thing I noticed when I went out there yesterday, there's really only one sign and it's, you know, maybe a foot by two feet or so is parks and wildlife in charge of putting up like any sort of signage about an alligator sanctuary area, or does that fall to the HOA, the county, the city, who is responsible there? Yeah, good question. So uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, we have uh, signage that we distribute to uh, HOAs and golf courses and, and lots of places like that. Um, obviously, lots of folks uh, take it upon themselves to provide their own signage. Um, this particular area, and I wasn't aware of this until this morning, but there's been reports of, of alligators there um, more or less, you know, living peacefully alongside humans since 2005. Um, so my understanding is the local residents have a, have a high degree of, of knowledge um, of what's going on there. Um, but that said, obviously, anytime you're in potential alligator habitat, putting up a sign doesn't hurt. Um, and it's also key just to get the message out there that uh, don't approach uh, nesting females, don't feed alligators, certainly don't harass them or try to kill them uh, or anything like that. Uh, but uh, we try to be very proactive in our, in our media messaging, in our signage, in our education and outreach, uh, just doing the right thing so that uh, uh, we can all live in harmony with each other. That's really the questions I have for you. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Anything else that you want to add about you know this instance or you know the the education around it? Yeah, no, that's that's a great uh, great question. I, th I think we covered most of the bases. Yeah, I would just you know reiterate again. Um, lots of folks moving into Texas from from outside of Texas, and as our, our urban areas grow, uh, these type of encounters you know are likely to increase in, in their media visibility, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily equate that with, we've got dangerous alligators out there trying to kill everybody. It's exactly the opposite case. They're just trying to do their thing, survive like we are. Uh, but that said, you know, when, when instances arise, and I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that this is an incident where we need to remove an alligator, uh, like I said, still uh, ongoing, very fluid investigation. Um, but, uh, if and when, in the interest of public safety, uh, we have the means and the methods and the, and the protocol to, to deal with those situations. We got a call from the woman that we ended up interviewing, and then we talked to the fire department as well. They told us what they saw. Um, and then we kind of looked back and seen that we had done previous stories on this particular retention pond and the alligators that were living there. And like you said, I even talked to a neighbor yesterday who had been there since 2006, and he was like, yeah, at least one has lived here the entire time that I've lived here. 
So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. And I will say on that point, um, uh, I, I'd heard earlier that there was talk of it. That it's not a that that particular area hasn't been designated a, an alligator sanctuary or or wildlife sanctuary by uh, TPWD. It's not linked to a permitted facility like a zoo or a farm. It it, it does appear that these are uh, wild alligators doing wild alligator things. That's great to know because that's the sign that was there was just alligator sanctuary. It didn't have any branding or anything from anyone else, like from any official group or or, entity or government entity. But that was the one sign that was there. It just said alligator sanctuary and that was it. So that is great to know. And I will make sure to update that for our story and coverage and stuff. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks so much, John. I appreciate your help. And yeah. uh, have a good weekend.